Imola, a classic European circuit set in the rolling countryside of Italy's Emilia-Romagna region amidst vineyards and orchards. It is also in the heart of the supercar universe, a stone's throw away from the factories of Ferrari, Maserati and of course Lamborghini. It's a track that every racing driver loves to drive and today I'm here to drive this track in an Aventador and a Gallardo as part of the Castrol Edge Lamborghini experience. Well, we're here at the Imola circuit and what's happening over here is a little bit of a taster of things to come. It's to try and understand the power of the Gallardo over here. So a little bit of an oversteer exercise and just to get used to it, it's going to be a fun day. Our group was a mixed one with varying levels of experience. Some had never driven anything more powerful than a Swift. It was a good idea then to give them a full briefing before introducing them to these terrifyingly powerful cars. The session at the skid pad gave everyone a chance to get the hang of driving sideways, which wasn't always easy. After some good power sliding, it was time to move on to the next stage. Well, I think the whole thing about this Castrol Edge Lamborghini experience is that they're building it up slowly. We were on the oversteer pad just to get a little taste of the power. Now we are shifting to the slalom. Again, uh, not very quick, but again, it just gives you a feel of what the car is, but really waiting for the big one, which is out there on the track. Driving a slalom is usually done in first or second gear and is quite easy if you don't push hard. But to be really quick through the cones, you need a fair amount of skill. It's all about balancing the steering and throttle to wiggle through the cones as quickly as possible. In fact, lifting of the throttle is as important as squeezing the pedal. This takes your weight of the rear wheels and tightens your line. The sudden direction changes through the cones also give drivers a good idea of the Gallardo's responsiveness and traction levels. A good precursor then to the main event. Okay, now it's time to drive on the Imola circuit. It's a Formula 1 circuit and we are driving in cars no less than Aventadors and Gallardos. So really looking forward to this because it's an F1 circuit with cars that are between 550 to 700 bhp. Warmed up and in the groove, it was time to strap into the Aventador and head out behind the instructor to lap Imola at a great pace. Lamborghini's flagship supercar is a real event, even when it's standing still. And once on the move, all your senses simply fly into overload. Imola's mix of fast straights, high-speed corners, chicanes and hairpins is what makes it one of the best driver circuits in the world. The great mix of challenging corners and undulating terrain is hard enough to master when driving something a bit tamer, but behind the wheel of a 700 bhp Lambo, the thrills are elevated to another plane. It's a good thing then that the Aventador in front of me isn't pushing too hard and driving just a notch below my limit. Five intense laps later, Feeling like I've driven a whole race, I cruise back to the pits thinking about the stresses the V12 engine must be under. In a V12 like an Aventador, running at max revs, I mean what's the kind of stress and what does the oil typically have to go through? It's very stressful definitely, it goes through a lot. Um, so these engines are pumping out 700 horsepower, so that kind of that's going to the rear wheels but the heat that the engine's producing is also 700 horsepower and that gets transferred via the oil into the cooling system of the engine so it's a massive amount of energy for the oil to control and at, at those powers the pressures in the engine are massive and uh, how would let's say the uh, kind of stress on the oil in this engine differed let's say from a normal road car and what are the sort of lessons you learn let's say from from high performance engines and racing in general 
So racing engines have a very different appetite to a normal road car. The racing engines, these high performance engines, run much hotter, harder than a normal road car. Although, as manufacturers drive down the cost of motoring and try to make fuel economy more important, or it is more important, we all know that there's a finite, you, you, everyone wants better fuel economy in their cars. So the manufacturers are taking lessons from these high performance engines and making it work in their own cars. The last session of the day saw me back on track behind the wheel of the Gallardo. And the truth is that the smaller Lambo is infinitely easier to drive than the monstrous Aventador, which felt edgy and downright terrifying. It's not that the Gallardo is slow, the LP574 Superleggera has, as its name suggests, almost 570 bhp on tap, but it feels more stable than the Aventador under braking and it even puts the power down more cleanly without too much shimming around. Now more familiar with the circuit and in a car that's easier to drive fast, my confidence levels and speeds kept rising. In fact, if someone had been timing me, it would be very likely indeed that I was lapping quicker in the Gallardo than the Aventador. Proof then that a Gallardo is probably all the Lambo you really need. It's been a long day here at Imola. We've been doing a lot of driving, but we've just not been able to get enough of it. Now, this isn't just an ordinary Formula One circuit. This is a circuit that's really steeped in history. It's really challenging. And driving these cars, the Aventadors and Gallardos, is what made the day truly special. Okay, I've just been riding a Mahindra here at Silverstone and I'm absolutely devastated. The bike is about 60 bhp. First time I've ridden a motorcycle that's lighter than me. Well, clearly I'm not talking about this motorcycle. What I am talking about is the one here, Mahindra's 2013 spec Moto3 racing machine. It's called the MGP30 and it's carefully crafted from carbon fiber, aluminium, magnesium and titanium. It is a fierce top flight racing machine. So no surprises, Team Mahindra was keeping a close watch on us. No, 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 I am not nervous. I am not nervous. I only say to be careful and enjoy. Yeah, I think it's a really great opportunity no, for the journalists to try our bike. My few laps on the MGP30 proved to be devastating. So, when it comes to riding a thoroughbred racer like this, even if you've ridden motorcycles before, quick motorcycles, it doesn't matter because nothing else will come as close. That's because the MGP30 handles like no other motorcycle. You see, it weighs next to nothing, which is about 78 kilos. So, entering a corner on the MGP30, you end up feeling like it's going to fall over. Just watch what happens here. Because it's turned in so fast, I had to correct my line again and again. And it's got so much grip and it turns in so quickly, it's so precise, that you just, it, it unnerves you. You haven't experienced anything like this before. The MGP30's performance is just as shocking. How does 0 to 100 in just over 3 seconds sign? Top speed is over 240 kilometers an hour. The single cylinder motor was incredibly talky too. At the same time, hitting the 14,000 RPM rev limiter was almost too easy. What made it all the more impressive was that it felt as smooth as a production machine and not some prototype racer. It was really an incredible experience to come here and experience what a Moto3 bike is like and I feel all the more proud of it because it's a Mahindra at the end of the day, a bike that has a lot of effort coming in from India into getting it onto the racetracks where the best from the world are competing and really uh, I wish them the very best. It was a fantastic experience to come here. As it so happens, the MGP30 and Mahindra Racing's Miguel Oliveira grabbed a fine third place finish at the recent Malaysian GP. 
and I'm certain that there will be more celebrations in the time to come. Don't go away right after this break. Lots of news in Scoop.